Some images really evoke and spark a sense of mystery for me, and stranded sea creatures are one of those images, and I've always wanted to make such a scene. So in this video, I will go through the process of creating this beached giant. All right, we'll start off with creating the sea monster itself. When making creatures in Blender, I suggest blocking out the big parts first, really trying to define the idea and silhouette of the creature. I'm just using simple cubes and a mirror modifier for this one. I'm going for something real-ish, but menacing. Now that the big shapes are blocked out, we will bring it into sculpting. Apply your modifiers and then head into sculpting mode. In here, we will make use of the remesh, a great way to add resolution to our creature. Just hit remesh and boom, you're ready to sculpt. Also, turn on X mirror for good measure. And now we can start sculpting the proper model. Now this shader is not super great for sculpting. It would be nice with something a little more clear. Personally, I really like this clay-like one that can be enabled under matcaps. This for me is a lot nicer to work with. It really makes the forms pop. There are a lot of great tools to use for sculpting, like clay buildup, the grab brush, and so on. But the whole sculpting tool set is really a skill by itself, and so is creature sculpting in general. If you want to learn more about creature sculpting, I recommend checking out my longer video on creature concept art in Blender. If you run out of detail on your model, simply head back to the remesher, lower the voxel size, remesh, and boom! more resolution. And you can always hit Ctrl plus R to remesh again. A suggestion for your sea creature is to make them softer than you think. The sea is cold, so blubber is a thing, and they need smooth surfaces like a plane for aerodynamic purposes. I will also add some ferocious teeth for good measure. Also, fun fact, if a creature is underwater, it doesn't really need lips to keep their teeth clean. Something to think about. When we are more or less done with the sea creature, we want to give it some textures and color. Now, we could go through the entire process of unwrapping it and so on, but that's a bit more time consuming. Instead, we will use vertex colors, but the standard vertex colors in Blender are a bit sluggish, especially if you have a high poly model. Luckily, there is a new version of this technique, Sculpt Vertex Paint, but this feature is only available in Blender 3.0 Alpha, so I will select and copy my creature, open Blender 3.0, paste the creature in, and set the matcap to something simple to easily see the colors. And remember to turn on vertex to actually see the colors. Then open up Preferences, go to Experimental, and turn on the Sculpt Vertex Paint. And now we have access to this amazing new painting tool in sculpt mode. And we can just start painting our model. I will just do a simple color layer, nothing too fancy. I'm going for a whale-like color scheme, so something dark with a few bright spots and a red mouth, of course. When done, we have to convert the sculpt vertex paint colors into normal vertex colors. And we do this by clicking on the save sculpt colors that will store the colors in the selected vertex color above. We do all this so we can use it in 2.9. Hopefully in the future, all this will just work. Now we can copy the sea monster and bring it back into our original Blender scene again. However, the colors are not as vibrant as before. For some reason, the color is about 10 times as dark, so we will have to brighten them up a bit. Create a new material, get a vertex color node, plug it into the HSV node, and boost the value. We do lose some color data and there's some banding, but that's okay. Now we got the big color strokes, but to add some drama, we will add some scratches and grunge. To do this, we'll be using the Megascans library. In the library, they have these surfaces called imperfections that include lots of interesting textures to play with. I will use these imperfections to give some detail to my creature on top of my existing colors. Also, texture those teeth. They deserve some love. All right, the sea monster is complete. Let's build out a beach for this creature to lie on. I will create a simple plane, give it some slight variation with a displacement modifier with a cloud texture on it. Then I like to separate the big strokes of material differences with ramp noises and so on. With that done, I will once again seek the aid of Megascans and find some nice assets for my scene. I'm going for a colder beach look, so black sand, cliffs and pebbles is what I need. Export, export, export. Then we can start applying it to our ground. I think something really essential to any beach really is the sense of wetness. A nice trick here is to generate a noise texture and use it as a mask for roughness to make it more shiny. But then also use it with a mix RGB set to multiply to darken the local color. I see many people forget to add this little bit of darkness where the water is. This really helps out the effect a lot more. Then we want to build some shallow shoreline waves coming in. New plane, ramped gradient, some distorted noise, done. Then we can set the non-foam parts to be transmissive, enable the refraction features in Eevee, and then you have a nice water shader. And then we can just stretch it here and there to create some variation. Okay, I think it's time to put our sea monster in place. So we're gonna rotate it, and then we can sculpt a bit more on it to make it better rest on the ground. This really helps sell the feel of the monster being stranded. Oh yes, I really like where this is going. 
The idea, although a bit gory, is for the monster's belly to have been cut open. So we need a pool of blood streaming out of the open belly. A nice and flexible way is to create a new plane with a new material. We will give it a spherical gradient texture, adjust it with a mapping node and multiply it with a noise. Turn it red and add some details with the fancy maps from Megascans. Then subdivide your blood pool and stick it to the ground with a shrink wrap modifier. Then we can simply squash and stretch the blood pool into the shape we want and it will always stay on top because of the shrink wrap. Neat! My idea then was to have some people looking at this creature. So I added some 3D scans of people that I had lying around. I also had the idea that the creature maybe had eaten a human in the past, so when the gut was cut open, this human would flow out. It all looks a bit goofy now, but adding some clothes will really help bring all the characters together. Then it was time for the fish. Lots and lots a fish. So I cheated a bit here and brought in a fish from my underwater scenes tutorial. So if you want to see how I made these fish, you can check that one out. But I needed to transform the fish into a proper saltwater fish. So I got a new image, reshaped the model and retextured it. Boom, fish complete. Then the idea was to have the fish sort of flow out of the belly of the sea monster. This was a bit tricky to get right, but a nice hair system was the answer here. We'll create a new plane and shrink wrap it to the ground as well. Then on that plane, we will create a new particle system and set it to hair. Then go to the render tab and select object and then select our fish and adjust the scale a bit. Now we can use the particle edit mode to groom the hair in a flowy motion and then the fish will follow. So with a bit of tweaking, it now looks like the fish flowed out of the belly. Yes! Well, then all we gotta do from here is to add some final touches like sand building up, blood everywhere, wet stones, more blood adjusting the set, even more blood. Then I adjusted the lighting and found some good shots and rendered it all out. And here we have the final master shot. Personally, I really like these kinds of shots. They have an air of mystery and darkness to them that just fascinates me. To be honest, this was a huge undertaking. And if you want to see the full unedited process, you can check that out over on our Gumroad. Well, that is pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.